Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan is for the 25th of April. We're going to read in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapters 30 and 31, as well as 1 Chronicles chapter 10. And the New Testament will cover Matthew chapter 12. The New King James Version of the Bible, David's conflict with the Amalekites. Now it happened, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziglag, attacked Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the, wo the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So David and his men came to the city. <clears throat> there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. <clears throat> now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, uh, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Bessor, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Bessor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate, and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind. Because three days ago I felt sick. We had an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites, in the territory which belongs to Judah, and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, Can you take me down to this troop? So he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. <clears throat> and when he had brought him down, there they were, spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and none, nothing of theirs was lacking, neither small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Then David took all the flocks and herds, they had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. Now David came to the 200 men who had been so weary that they could not follow David, whom they also had made to stay at the book Bessor. So they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except for every man's wife and children, that they may lead them away and depart. But David said, My brethren, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given us, who has preserved us and delivered into our hand the troop that came against us. For who will heed you in this matter? But as his part is who goes down to the battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. So it was from that day forward, he made it a statue and an ordinance for Israel to this day. Now when David came to Ziglag, he sent some of the spoil to the elders of Judah to his friends, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. 
to those who were in Bethel, those who were in Ramoth of the south, those who were in Jatir, those who were in Aror, those who were in Sifmoth, and those who were in Eshtimoa, those who were in Rakal, those who were in the cities of the Jer Jeremilites, those who were in the cities of the Kenites, those who were in Hormah, those who were in Shor Hashan, those who were in Athak, those who were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were accustomed to rove. So now I'll pull up 1 Samuel chapter 31. As I do, we cover the Old Testament scriptures once in a year and the New Testament scriptures twice in a year. The tragic end of Saul and his sons, 1 Samuel chapter 31. Now the Philistines fought against Israel and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab and Malchishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men died together that same day died together that same day. When the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley and those who were on the other side of the Jordan saw that the men of Israel had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So what happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim it in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of Ashtoreth and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. Now when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan. And they came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree of Jabesh and fasted seven days. Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 10. And as I pull that up, we go, we have hundreds of spiritual messages at danielparsonsministry.com. And my wife, Patricia, is a gourmet vegan chef. She's got hundreds of delicious, healthy recipes, and you can access every single one of them on the Healthy Living tab at danielparsonsministry.com. Please comment on your favorite recipes. We enjoy interacting with you. Thank you. Tragic end of Saul and his sons. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled. Then the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So it happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gibor. And he stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of their gods and fastened, fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and they brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. 
but he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, he killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. So now I will pull up um, Matthew chapter 12. And as I do, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got hundreds of um, messages, uh, healthy living messages, and um, a whole bunch of very good quality content for you um, at Daniel Parsons Ministry. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel. Just search on YouTube for Daniel Parsons Ministry. And I appreciate your subscribing. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath, healing on the Sabbath. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him, how they might destroy him. Behold my servant. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory. And in his name, Gentiles will trust. A house divided cannot stand. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all, all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard, of it, heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast him out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. For how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad the unpardonable sin. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy for me will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. A tree known by its fruit. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. The scribes and Pharisees asked for a sign. 
And some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she, shall, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. An unclean spirit returns. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Jesus' mother and brother sinned for him. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brother stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. That's the end of today's Bible reading. God bless you, my friends, until we're together again. Bye for now.